Hello, everybody, and welcome to the world premiere of the Raid documentary brought to you by GameBreaker.tv, Typefrag, and, of course, Curse.com. You know them from such sites as MMOChampion.com to get all your World of Warcraft news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think my ears is ringing. Gary, did you say MMO Champion? Because uh, if you're looking for one, you know your boy Darnell right here. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. Hey, Darnell. Um, we're kind of in the middle of premiering this World of Warcraft documentary right now. Yeah, you know, I heard something about this movie going on here tonight about the World of Warcraft, you know, so I asked myself, I said, Self, you remember being in any kind of movie about the World of Warcraft? And I said, nah. Well, you know, except for this blues greatest cinemas of all time. I, I think they kind of started the documentary a little bit before you were sort of famous and all, you know, Hollywood and all. Well, then don't you think someone should have kind of thought to themselves, hmm, we got a big star on the scene. We should just go ahead and wrap everything up and, you know what I'm saying, re-roll. Re-roll? Reroll what? <laughs> Man, you know, re-roll. Roll with the number one superstar wild donkey season one through 17 ludicrous gladiator of all time. Me. I don't know, Darnell. Maybe, like, you know, if Kevin decides to do a raid documentary two, I could suggest that he call your agent and maybe get in touch. Oh, really, Gary? What are you going to call that stuff? Hmm? Oh, the raid two, the search for more fat nerds. Come on now, Gary. Everyone knows that sequels is always bad except for Rush Hour 2. What the hell y'all thinking? Man, go close all this stuff down because y'all is crazy. Right? That's it. Everyone go home. Good night. Thank you for coming. Go home, Darnell. There's like thousands of people here watching, waiting for the world premiere of the raid. They've been waiting weeks, if not actually months for this. We can't just tell people to go home. Man, trying to hear all that crybaby stuff. Come, hold up. How many people? Thousands, Darnell. Thousands. There's thousands of people watching. Oh, damn. He ain't playing. Oh, uh, well, then. Okay. Y'all should probably watch my show, Blitz Blues, on GameBreaker.tv every Tuesday mornings. And I uh, hope y'all enjoy the show. Back to you, Gary. I didn't tell this could be any good with no your boy Darnell or nothing but that old poofy head law. Hmm. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the raid premiere. Right here on GBTV, GameBreaker.TV, I'm Gary Gannon, of course, this is GameBreaker.TV. Joining me tonight, too bad it wasn't Mr. Darnell, but joining me tonight, the one, the only, you know him from GBTV's legendary, of course, Mr. Mike B, a.k.a. Phony, how are you, sir? Look at you dressed up as well. Thank you very much, sir. Got the purple tie out for this, it's a special occasion. Very too bad very I'm not nice. Darnell, thanks. Thanks for just playing it down like that. Just, it's just Mike B. Oh, yeah. It's just Mike B. <sighs> and joining us for the pre-show event here tonight... The director, why we're all here, Mr. Kevin Michael Johnson. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's exciting to be here. I can't even believe Darnell turned out. That's uh, man, it's quite an honor, he does, actually. He yeah. doesn't turn out for a whole lot of things, you know. It's kind of an honor <laughs> when he actually kind of shows up for your event, so it's pretty amazing. Definitely. So, it's your night. The first time ever the Raid <sighs> documentary Ooh. gets shown to the world live with, uh, I don't know, close to 15,000 of your uh, best friends. How do you feel, buddy? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, gosh, it's been a long road coming. I am uh, so excited, actually, to finally get to share it with people. It's, uh, it's been a long road, and I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk a little bit about that. But um, I'm excited. I'm very, very proud of it. It's, it's far more than I ever thought it would be when I initially started. It's, uh, it's really cool, and it's definitely a testament to, uh, I think, the value and... Uh, of the community that surrounds a game like World of Warcraft, uh, MMOs in general. So uh, I'm excited to share it with the world finally and, and even get some feedback and just sort of hear people's thoughts. So it's an exciting night for sure. It's it's crazy. I think I, uh, I missed the dress code, though. I'm like sitting in my pajama pants here. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Holy, not even close. Oh, uh, yeah, it's crazy. I should have... I should have uh, Dressed up a little more, I think. That's all right. That's all right. You're the director. You're allowed to show up, you know, in, in the T-shirt because it's cool. You know, you're in Brad Pitt. Um, so tell me a little bit. What, 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 what inspired you to actually, like, you know, go out and want to make uh, a documentary about World of Warcraft and raiding in, more specifically? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, um, I, I mean, I grew up as a video game kid, uh, but I, I had a huge section of my uh, young adulthood where I didn't play games. But out of college... I got really fascinated by you know what I was hearing about MMO gaming, games like uh, EverQuest, of course, Second Life, uh, and, and World of Warcraft. And uh, so I would read about them, and finally I was like, man, I, I just got to figure out what's going on with these games. You know, and I started downloading clients and checking them out, and I uh, was very, very interested, just even casually at the beginning. But um, 
what kind of opened my eyes was actually uh, jumping on the World of Warcraft forums and trying to you know figure out how to play my character. Of course, I was a little little warrior in Elwynn Forest, just hacking up wolves and oh, this is cute. Oh, there's another player. That's really cool. That's fun. But then I, I hopped on the forums to try to learn how to play my character, and I came across a uh, sticky guide by Cyberhelm called uh, Fortifications, and it was this like 33 page diatribe on raiding and how to spec your character and like you know stacking stamina for this type of fight stacking avoidance for this type of fight there was some calculus in there and he was talking about the importance <laughs> of being a tank and like what that means almost from a philosophical level and and uh i, I was like wow i'm like killing gnolls and elwin what the heck is he talking about i don't even understand <clears throat> Uh, I started off with going to the, the forums. I thought this was going to end in a much worse note. Like, I went to the forums, asked for help. I was like, ugh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, no. No, no. So it was, uh, it was a, uh, basically, that was a huge open window into a world that I was like, I got to figure out what this is. And, you know, I leveled up and uh, basically got started with uh, following Satterholm on Tank Spot right when he was starting to build that site and was a real part of kind of that community growing to, to what it is now. And, um, so that, that kind of began sort of uh, opening my eyes to how big this was, how involved an experience like rating is, uh, both from a technical standpoint, also from an organizational standpoint. Um, I mean, it was fascinated. Then, of course, I got into rating and rated in um, uh, early Lich King or Wrath of Lich King with uh, Eventide, Ciderhomes Guild. We rated, uh, we did the whole meta achievement for um, the first tier of content there. And... Uh, I was like, man, I, I would run into conversations with my family where they would say, what is it you're doing? Why do you have to be home at this time? Like, I don't, I don't get it. And I'd be like, gosh, how do I explain this? Okay, so there's a lot of people. <laughs> how do I explain uh, this and not sound like I'm, a complete, <laughs> yeah, I'm completely crazy and out of my mind? I'm, I'm playing, playing video games. I'm going to play this video game, but, you know, <laughs> exactly. it's kind of a little bit deeper than that. Yeah, so, like, you know, it, and it's such an interesting private experience, right? Like, how, how, how do you open... How do you open the experience to someone who's never seen it before in a way that they can catch exactly how complicated it is, how social it is? Uh, I mean, just all the nuances that surround the sense of community and, and accomplishment and all of that. Like, how do you do that? And, you know, that was honestly where, in trying to explain it to my family, where I was like, look, someone has to try to shine a light on this very hidden experience and, and bring some sort of clarity to people who have no idea what it is instead of just calling it like oh that's a video game you know why are you, why are you playing this video game uh so that yeah. was just that was sort of your inspiration of behind of uh just you know feeling the need to kind of tell a story and try to explain so it was the motivation to try and explain to a lot of people outside the mmo community just what this is all about and and the culture that surrounds it absolutely absolutely yeah i I mean, there's just not enough words to articulate all those details. You, you really have to show it. And even then, showing it, as I have come to find out, is an incredibly complicated yes. ordeal. <laughs> it was, it's, it's an experience. I mean, it's totally an experience playing with other players online. If you show that to somebody, it's just like, so all those other people, whatever, it's just, they, don't, they don't quite understand that everything you're doing is relying on like the other person. From a PvP perspective, it's like every, you know, everything relies on like, the, your buddy next to you. And if you try to tell somebody, yeah, this other guy's playing a game too with me, it's kind of like, I don't get it. I don't understand. They have to experience it. Yeah, exactly. Which, I mean, how, how complicated is that? Like, that's when, you know, and of course, as, as the uh, penultimate dreamer, I'm like, oh, we can do this. We can do this. Let's get webcams and, like, let's record and we'll not record audio and we'll just, we'll just sync it all up and make it work and we'll have really great, like, professionals talk about it and, you know, and... You know, and it, that was just that was sort of the idea, and man, uh, I didn't had no idea what I was what I was getting myself into. So, but, yeah. so, so, how did you actually? So, all right, so you, you got the inspiration to to make this, and you wanted to tell the story. So, how did you actually like uh, just start it? Like, uh, wow, how did you raise money for it? I mean, films, documentaries aren't cheap to make. So, like, how did you just get it off the ground? Yeah, you know, it started from a very small idea. It was uh, I want to make a ten minute film that that is like really high quality, sort of like a, a like a prove myself kind of film, but I wanted it to be high quality, so I set a, a pretty high goal of raising money through Kickstarter, which I'm sure a lot of people know of now. Back then, it was kind of just getting off the ground, but uh, it's uh, basically a, a grassroots sort of fundraising website where you can pitch your project online, put a video, and, and you know set a, set a uh, fundraising goal and, and go for it, basically, and, and that's what I did, and I, I got to tell you, I was astounded by the response. You know, I did a couple preview videos where I kind of said, look, this is the tone, this is the quality I'm going to go for in this film. 
and people just started to rally around and I, I you know, made, I uh, raised way more money than I intended, which had me thinking, oh gosh, well then this needs to be something more than I even envisioned. And then I got a call from, uh, you know, one of my most loyal partners in this whole process and that is actually Typefrag, the company. Um, they got in touch with me and essentially were like, we love what you want to do. We want to make sure it's an absolute, you know, success. However, we can help you, you know, let's do this. And they have just been, uh, you know, a constant support and encouragement all along the road. So they were like the next, you know, tier up of like, okay, I got to step up my game. Let's do this huge. Uh, and then, you know, and then it just sort of steamrolled from there and people were like, let's do a, like a pre-screening at BlizzCon, you know, last year. Yeah, we were there. And, we were there. Yeah. We saw the pre-screening. Yeah, Great. exactly. So then I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to deliver. How am I going to do this? Like, <laughs> You're like, whoa, I, the Kickstarter got me the money. I actually have to make this thing work. Yeah. Well, yeah you're I'm jumping really, forward because now you're already, now you're already, got know. wait, slow down. Sorry, sorry, First of all, sorry. really quick, you mentioned Typefrag and we got to thank Typefrag. Uh, they're doing some giveaways courtesy of Typefrag. And I know a lot of people in the stream are wondering how you get those stay Stay tuned uh, for the post show after we actually watch the raid uh, documentary and all will be revealed of how you enter to win the doghouse computer, the uh, headsets, and there's going to be uh, some other cool stuff given away. There's actually an after after party type frag is going to be thrown. So we'll tell you a little bit about that. So stay tuned coming up after. Um, so wait, so let, let's just jump back for a second because before BlizzCon, let's uh, let's let's back up a second and unpack some of this. Because I want to know about like you know. So when did the production actually start? Like a uh, year, month? When did when did you get get actually rolling in production? Yeah, uh, so the Kickstarter campaign, I believe, ended in sometime in March. So we started shooting with uh, months behind. Uh, I think it was early March, uh, and we filmed for about three months and. Uh, that was basically the goal, you know, the thought is, okay, everyone's got to be on webcams and recording all the time, and here's hard drives, you guys, you know, each of you get one terabyte hard drive to store data, and, a, you know, a 350, I don't know, maybe it was 500 gigabyte drive that you'll send back and forth to me, and we'll handle files that way, like via mail, and uh, that's kind of the way it started, and, um, you know, how, did, 18, how, did, how did you pick those guys? How did you, like, you know, find yeah. out about months behind and even... <laughs> Lore's even, hair. Yeah, Lore's why. hair was just so epic that <laughs> so you just was like, He was like, this guy's going to look amazing with a huge light just right in the back. That's to light that thing up. Yeah, I know. It's, 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 you're right. It's like, how can you turn it down, you know? But, uh, no, so it actually began on Tank Spot. So that, those guys, uh, you know, when I first pitched the idea, I pitched it to Cider Helm. I wanted to do it with Eventide because that was the guild I was in. I was like, let's do it with you, Cider, you know, you and Eventide, let's do it with this group. Um, and, of course, Sider was crazy busy with Tank Spot. There was no way he wanted to do it, but there was just no way. And so I started with uh, basically community authors on Tank Spot. I talked to Zav, actually, from Premonition, and he was all gung ho. He was like, absolutely, let's do this. Um, and then I was like, well, you know what involves webcams, like putting webcams in your home and like filming you guys doing your thing. And he's, he's like, well, let me talk to my dudes, you know, and, He's like, oh, no, 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 they don't want to do that. So I was like, oh, shoot, okay. So then it just kind of went on from there. I talked to a couple other guilds through TankSpot uh, authors, and um, we had a little private forum on TankSpot, and I'm like, guys, I don't know what to do. You know, I'm always like, let me talk to my guys. Let's see if they want it. And so um, sure enough, they were all, all really interested. I hopped on event with them, had a like a, a real heart-to-heart. -heart. I said, look, you guys, you know, this is going to involve a lot of work on your part. You're essentially going to be part of the production. You know, you're going to have to shoot. Uh, your webcams, you're going to have to answer all my pre-raid questions. We would do pre-raid questions before every raid and then, uh, you know, try to get their feeling on how the progression is going, you know, sort of talking to the camera type of thing. And uh, and uh, they were all like, ah, oh, we, we can handle this. No big deal. It's going to be fine. We're, we're good at, you know, putting things in the mail. We're really good at mailing you things. And, uh, <laughs> little little did they know how much work I actually go into this. They're like, no, man, yeah. we're making a real documentary here. It's yeah. like a real yeah. deal. I'm like, guys, mail me your stuff, please, because uh, I need it. I just, you know, no, that, that, it's, it's hard. Actually, a project like this, it's really, uh, it's crazy to think that you're going to get 10 people responsible for actually shooting your film, right? And they're not, they're not the filmmaker. So that's kind of the weird part about this project is I've, and I really, really appreciate what they, those guys did. I mean, they really put, have put themselves out there, number one. And those are very private experience, right? Like, you, it, that's kind of the joy of it, to be able to sit in your underwear and, like, play games but still be social and do awesome things. And so these guys are like, well, we put ourselves out there. That's great. And, uh, and so that's number one thing I was impressed with. Number two, 
was just their, you know, their stick to itiveness. Like it was a long process. And uh, how long was the production? How long was the whole process that you guys did filming for? Yeah, we, we, we did in game stuff for about three months. And then kind of all along there, I was taking trips all across the country um, and into Canada even to shoot them in high definition like one on one, all interviews. the interviews and stuff. Yeah, I, 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 I'm I'm floored that you got ten people to actually get up and mail stuff out. Like you can't even get ten people to show up on time for anything anymore. <laughs> and you got Dude. people to actually leave the house and mail stuff out. That it, Mike, Mike, it was it was not easy. I'm trying. I think a big, big big round of applause to months behind for uh for for, for being part of the rate event and mailing stuff. Thank you for I, mailing I mean, stuff. Stress like I I think I lost a couple of years with uh, of anxiety. You, you know? need them anyway. So yeah. so so bring me it forward now. Like uh, I know you know this has been a long time in the making, and it, it, it's also been a long time in the post production process and editing and stuff like that. So you showed a, uh, an edit of this last year at uh, BlizzCon 2010. We were Mike and I were actually at it and got to see the at the at the uh, House of Blues party. You showed us a cut, which was really great. That changed since then. But um, so there's, there's there's obviously been some hurdles you know, throughout trying to get this film out. And what, so I think a lot of fans have been like, well, what's going on? You guys, you were, you did this during wrath and we're at Kata. So what's, what's, what have been the hurdles? What's the delay? What's taken so long for this actually to hit the world? Yeah, that's a terrific question. And I think, so part of it is the fact that I, I am, I'm insane in, in the way that I like to set the bar for whatever it is I do very, very high. And, um, and that's a problem when you're getting into something you don't, know anything about you know like this this i i didn't know how to shoot and light and edit before i did this film so you so, weren't a filmmaker before this essentially oh no no not at all no i was an actor i i just wasn't uh so it's uh it was a crazy process and um a lot of learning for me so i, I started out as a one-man band essentially i had a friend Stuart mcmichael who is very experienced on sort of the um fundraising side of filmmaking and he was just a huge counsel to me as a lawyer like incredible help so he was sort of my counsel all the way through and like all of a sudden it was like we got to do this thing for blizzcon and i'm like oh gosh how am i going to produce assets that are like cool and posters and like uh, you know lower thirds that actually look awesome i don't know how to do that stuff and man just these people started coming out of the woodwork uh, of my life, some of them from very distant corners and some of them from very intimate places of like friends who just were like, we, we believe in you, we want to do this. But uh, number one is Hugo Creative. I got to thank these guys. They're an incredibly talented group of people. They uh, basically are a small design firm that essentially got on board with what I was doing. Uh, their website, you all should check them out. Well, not now, but uh, Hugo Creative, you should look them up. Amazing. Uh, they basically got on and were like, we're going to see you through this thing. And they helped produce all the sort of visual assets for the film. So it was this process of like these little pieces. And then BlizzCon happened, um, which by the way, I would never have been able to get the film edited. I had 18 terabytes of, of video files, guys, 18 terabytes. Wow. So, so I, I shoot this whole thing. I have all this interview footage and then I'm like, okay, I got to edit this. Like, where does, where, where does one begin? You're like, where do you I know? start sifting through all these countless hours of gaming footage and webcam <laughs> footage and everything? Yeah. Else? So I, I, I looked for an editor in New York city. I was like, I got to find someone who's crazy enough to take on the complexity of MMO gaming and try to like an 18 terabytes of video files. So, you know, who's going to be brave enough to like, uh, yeah, that sounds great. And I'm going to do it for free. You know, like who's going to do that? Who actually like, but I found this guy who just, his name's Ilya Magazan, and he, he is incredible. And he just got on board and was like, let's go. And he's such a skilled editor, such an incredible friend. Like, he, he's really poured his heart into this. And uh, there's no way I could have got even the BlizzCon cut uh, done before uh, that deadline. And we got that FedEx, like, one day. Like, we were editing up until the last second. And so and then, so essentially that was the best we could have even dreamed to do by that time with the footage that we had. And then we were like, we got back home and I essentially said, you know, this film deserves so much more. We have so much more to offer. And we just basically hit the studio again and we're like, let's dig in and, you know, add the sections that are missing that we really feel are important to the conversation of, of what this is all about. MMO gaming, the complexities, the, maybe the, the, the more typical media side which is very negative which was missing from my film in the uh the blizzcon cut that side that's like you know how, what about time management in this type of experience what about you know this question of internet addiction where does that fit in the story and so 
we began saying, you know, we got to add that stuff. And because I had that footage, it was just a matter of time and work to, to get it polished and in the right place. So we just went back and worked on it. And um, at that point, we were like, man, we got to add some really cool music. And so it, it was this sort of tier where it's like all of a sudden we're like, we got to do this with cool stuff. And uh, one of my my dear friends, Ben Whitman, who is just talented beyond all, all ends, he, he, uh, he essentially was like, I want to write music for your, your film. And I, I couldn't believe it. I, he's like in that talent tier, like above who you would ever think would like work with you. And so he, he started writing music. So then essentially the answer to your question, Gary, is it, it was this sort of progressive tier of like, oh my gosh, here's this value add. Like here's this person who wants to add value to what I'm doing. Right. I'm not, I'm not in a place to turn that down. So, because it's going to add to the overall experience yeah, towards the yeah. end, and all these people would keep coming out of the woodwork, which would delay the process, but right. you knew in your heart that it would make a better product at the end. Yeah, and, and I, one more person I, I really have to, to say is this guy, uh, David Wilson, who is just a post-production sound mixer who you know, has won like, huge film awards for documentary sound mixing, and he was like, yeah, I want to I pause this up. You know? And um, again, those are things where these guys are working in their off hours. You know, they're, they're professionals at what they do, and they're just volunteering their time. And you know, that's not something I can even pressure. I can't say, guys, what are what, you know, the raid. That's Let's really go. cool. I mean, so it's like, yeah. it's like grassroots from start to finish. You know? Started on Kickstarter, starts with the community, MMO fans giving mm. you a couple bucks here and there to get this thing off the ground. And then after that, all these other people from different communities of film and music and all these other things come out of the woodwork to kind of, you know, help it along and get it to where it's come today. So, all yeah, right. So we're here. We're here with just, you know, uh, I don't know, 15,000 of your closest MMO friends on the chat room. Hi, chat room and everybody who's watching live. So who do you now that now that it's all packaged up and it's ready to go? I mean, like we, you talked a little bit by saying that, you know, you were trying to sort of explain to maybe the non MMO player what this experience is like. I mean, do you think that, was that your, is your goal to reach an audience of non MMO players out there? And like, do you think that the film appeals to a non gamer audience? Yeah. I mean, honestly, from the very beginning, that's always been my vision. You know, I, I, I want to do justice and that, okay. So here's the problem with a film like this, right? And an MMO like wow is incredibly deep and the hardcore gamer wants that depth. They want to know the fact that you're going to explain how complicated the strategy of this fight is. Like, you know, they want to, they want you to get into the nitty-gritty. But uh, and that was a fight that Ilya and I, my editor, really struggled with was the balance of that because uh, we, as hardcore MMO players, we care about that. We understand it. Yeah. Uh, but that is a little bit better. Than, yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. And that is another tier. That is just like another tier where someone from the outside, they can't even, they can't even take it in. So um, the, the film is very much designed for someone who has no idea what it is to, to basically get in pretty deep and see the complexity and, and yet not feel overwhelmed. So that is certainly exactly the, the I think, the through point of, of what we are trying to accomplish. What's, what's amazing here is I feel like this is like, a, I mean, this is a huge deal. I mean, I got to say thanks to Curse.com, MMO Champion, Typefrag, Kevin for making the film. I mean, I feel like it, 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 we don't get MMO documentaries every day. This isn't like a, a subject matter that, that films... Are a plus for the MMO industry that are a plus. Yeah, that aren't focused on, you know, <laughs> internet addiction and all these other things, like totally focusing on that. Like, you know, it's, it's, we don't get these every day. And I'm just really excited to be a part of it. Um, I don't know. I, I, and I kind of feel like we're, we're this is like this is like the red carpet of a new era. It's like we don't need like Hollywood or you know you've got this internet red carpet right now. With fi- think about that. I, I just want to stop for a second and think about it. there's there's sixteen thousand people watching this live right now. You could not fit sixteen thousand people into right. a movie theater for a world premiere. Could not happen. Yeah, and be in your pajamas. Yeah, that that's like uh, my. <laughs> Are you nervous? Just a little bit. A little bit. I, I, I'm so happy, man. I, I, this is, you know, this is the right way to share it with the world. I mean, I, I, if any film belongs shared this way, this is it. And it's know? funny because that's when Kevin first approached me about being part of this as well. And he just sort of said, you know, this started out with, with, with gamers and it was about the community and about uh, the MMO culture. And he's like, I want that, that community to be the first to see it. And I think GameBreaker.tv is the perfect vehicle to kind of get it out there into the world. And I was just like, absolutely, man. I want to. I want to be a part of this. This is awesome. This doesn't happen every day, and I'm super excited. Uh, I think we just got to get going. Um, Let's watch it. Uh, I yeah. got. I, I got a. I got. 
<laughs> I've got nice. snacks. I've got to get my snacks out. Everybody, you know, we've we, got your popcorn. We need to find another use for your tinfoil hat. I do. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, That's Bashiok awesome. doesn't strike. I gotta <laughs> yeah, get this ready. I need some popcorn. I got that. Um, I've got drinks over here. I've got some water. I'm good. Um, I'm gonna free up a few resources so we make sure that we get really good frame rates. Sounds good. Nice. Uh, I think we're almost ready. Let's do it. I can't imagine any other better way to do this. Again, thanks so much, you guys. Uh, wa watching, waiting for the giveaways. Uh, all will be revealed in the post show. Stay tuned. We'll be coming up right after we watch it. And with that, uh, guys, I give you. You got anything? Any, you got anything last? You want to? You want? You want to say, Kevin, really quick? Man, just... uh, thank you, donors. Thank you, uh, Typefrag. Thank you, everyone I mentioned. Um, who helped put this together, uh, Ilya, Ben, Stuart, um, Hugo Creative, you guys are awesome. Uh, this is all, all for the community and everyone who's a part of it, so thanks. All right, everybody, without further ado, The Raid. See you. World premiere right here on GameBreaker.tv. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs>